Top of the morning, everybody. Eric Solbox out the shop this morning. It's about uh, 8 a.m. It's Tuesday. I don't think I've shown the Rockwell lathe yet. So I got rid of the little Atlas and uh, I wanted to get something a bit bigger, more in line with uh, what I've got for a mill now. So these actually pair. Uh, they're not huge tools, but this is uh, for a home machine shop. These are really nice um, as a pair. Anyway, got rid of the little Atlas, which basically funded getting this rock well. This is quite a bit bigger lathe. Um, things like uh, the spindle bore on uh, the Atlas was just tiny. Like I could definitely do like gunsmithing and stuff on this. This is a really nice tool, super good shape. Here's the gears on the end, like no, no missing teeth or anything. Um, <clears throat> It's got the uh, quick change gearbox, which my other lathe didn't have. I actually tried an Atlas with the quick change gearbox and it was so loud that I wanted nothing to do with it. I got rid of that lathe. This one is nice and quiet, which is really nice. Um, it's got a Reeves drive underneath. So the motor is basically down here inside of the stand and runs up through. Uh, Reeves drive allows you, you can actually change the RPM with this handle on the fly, which is really nice. Um, it's got this guy here. I can put it straight into back gear if I need to slow things down. I can lock the spindle for taking uh, the chucks on and off. Uh, over here is direct drive, or I can go into loose spindle and spin it around, which is uh, really cool to have all that functionality right there. Uh, this is the flame hardened bedway version, which is definitely nice. Uh, I drove all the way to Oregon to look at a Rockwell just like this one, except it was the shorter bed. And I walked away from it because the tool just wasn't in that great of shape. Like it had a busted uh, piece on the back. Somebody had dropped it. And you know, it's probably not, wasn't going to be in, uh, if the head isn't perfectly in line with the ways and stuff, you're just, you're never going to get a good cut. And so even though I drove all the way to Oregon, I just, you know, I would rather walk away and that's what I did. And I'm glad I did because I came back. I paid more for this one, but uh, you know, I, I got ways that are way longer. Speaking of the ways, these are absolutely perfect. There isn't a single mark on these. They're absolutely stunning all the way up and down. The only mark on these is that evidently this was owned, I think by the state of Washington, um, but it's down in the recessed area. Nothing rides in there. So it's got another little mark over here. Um, what a great tool. Uh, check this out. I mean, look at the overall condition. Like this lathe was from, according to the, uh, the tag on the back of it, I think 1966. And so this is where it was sold at. And look at the condition of the sticker, probably sold in like 1967 that that sticker has been on there since then. Uh, very nice, excellent shape. So underneath, I got a four jaw chuck with it, which is really nice. Uh, I got a back plate. Fall arrest, I've never had a lathe with a fall arrest, so it's really nice to have that. Um, <clears throat> came with a steady rest, uh, there's tail stock, some basic tooling, but not much. I would have actually liked to have gotten a lot more stuff with it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it didn't come with a whole lot of stuff. It's got one interesting, functionality here it's got this little button on the back here if you've ever done threading on a lathe you know that after you run your thread across and in you have to pull back out go back and then back in and what this does you can set the position and it'll snap in and out see how it's got a hard stop so you come out hard stop it'll put you right back where you want to be every single time. And then of course you thread in, <clears throat> you turn in just a bit with the uh, with the compound before you make your next cut. Nice little function I don't think I've ever seen on any other lathe. Uh, just a really nice tool, much nicer than what I had and a little more robust. So thought I'd show that to you guys. Uh, what do we have going on over here? I am building Gen 2 KLR windscreen risers. I've been out of stock on these for quite a while. Here's the jigging that makes the uh, the riser part of it. Um, been out of stock on those. I've had guys uh, just screaming for them. A couple of guys have called several times 
and I keep saying, you know, I just haven't had time to do it. So <clears throat> I'm uh, getting some of those whipped up, just 10 sets real quick. I'll do that today. Uh, since I brought the, uh, the powder coating in house, I've never powder coated the uh, windscreen riser kits. I've always paid to have them done. So today will be the first time trying to uh, get them to run through all of this stuff. I did a few months ago buy some uh, paper clips. The thing with powder coating is you have to figure out a way to, to hang everything. And so you have to have a hole in your part and you have to have a way of hanging it. So these little white boxes, there's two of them up there, are paper clips. And what I'm gonna try doing is opening up the paper clips and uh, running them through a hole on the uh, windscreen risers to hang them. So I'm thinking like they'll hang through a hole, something like this so that I can powder coat them. Um, probably gonna get some Faraday action from the uh, powder coating machine. It uh, powder coating, you can have a hard time getting into recessed areas. So it'll be interesting to see if I'm able to get the powder to sit up in there. Luckily it's on the inside of the part. So if, if there's a little bit of a holiday in there, I won't trip out too much, but hopefully I can get my settings just right to where that's not an issue. So I'm also trying to shoot a video this morning uh, that'll actually, I don't generally edit my videos, but I'm actually doing a how it's made video this morning on these that'll that'll basically show how that's done. So most of my videos are just real quick stuff like what I'm doing right now, but anyhow, I'm gonna get back to work. Sure wish I had time to go out and ride this brand new motorcycle of mine, but uh, yeah, haven't had a break from Asher in a while. So hopefully here pretty quick, I'll get a couple of days off and be able to go out and do some riding. Anyway, Eric Solvox, ride safe everybody. Talk to you soon.